Good everyone, and welcome to today's video, and today it's a request by Chad Blignort, I think I've got that correct. Um, and today he's requested a bunch of lineups for recommended nations really, such as, um, or like, he wants to know which nations, will, which lineups would be the best for um, Silver Lion gain, because apparently according to his YouTube comments, he's been struggling a bit. Now, I'm more than happy to help out, buddy. Um, but I will warn you, I'm not the most knowledgeable individual when it comes to things like this. Um, obviously, with me having nearly 7 million lines set the bank, I can't exactly say I've really struggled for, um, shall we say, lions, so to speak. Now, I wasn't sure if you wanted aircraft included, so I thought maybe if I include one or two planes in each lineup, because a plane can make the difference between winning a battle and losing a battle. Um... So I thought, well, if I include a couple of planes in some of the lineups, this will be more effective. So we're starting out with France, and um, my recommended lineup for France would be the M10 Tank Destroyer. And I know some people would probably think, why the, why the M10? Why the M10? But um, the M10 is actually a pretty good tank. Um, obviously, the turret's slow, it's got no armor, and it's got no roof, but the gun is perfectly punchy if you put it in the right position. And things like that. Then you've got the obviously the French Sherman, which is exactly the same as the Sherman in the US tree. You could actually fight, uh, well, fight American Shermans with this thing, and it's very funny. Um, you also have the AMX 13 FL11, which is a nice little light tank. For your aircraft, for what I recommend, I choose, well, I chose the F6F5, the French model. Two 1,000 pound bombs, six rockets, 650 caliber machine guns pretty decent aircraft. I've always loved the F6F. And obviously, you do need a spag, and I was considering um, the P70AA, but then I thought, well, to be fair, the Bofors would probably be better, because it can do anti-tank work. But the main problem with this is with this vehicle is that it doesn't really have anything else going for it. And obviously, with France having limited SPAA potential till you get to rank 3, which is, well, oh, sorry, rank 4, which is the AMX-13 DCA, you're not really going to have anything else. So I thought, well, the Bofors would be better for anti-tank work. And not only that, if you hit a plane with a 40 mil, you don't even have to hit it twice. So I thought this was the better idea. Now, he also asked for tactics. And I thought, I don't really want to go into tactics too much. But recommended tactics for each individual vehicle. Sherman, use your mobility, try and get around the enemy's flank, and put one in the side, because the APCBC around on this thing is perfectly adequate. I love the APCBC on the Sherman. M10, you're going to want to snipe with this thing. Um, that's what it was built to do, and that's what you should bloody do with it, because I've seen far too many people try to play M10 like a heavy tank, and they fail. Because all I do is I get around the side, put on the engine block, and just watch as they helplessly try to crank their turret. AMX-13. Now, this one can be a mix. Um, you can use it as a anti-tank weapon, such as on, like, um, well, obviously, you do have the APCBC, which, for some reason, has the same penetration as this. You're going to want to get the APCBC. This was recently added. Not really recently. It was added about a year ago. But, um... The armor on this thing isn't too bad. Obviously, the turret is pretty trollish. I even have troubles with the turret on this thing. Um, you're going to want to be a lot more careful with it, though. Obviously, 50 cows can get your side and rear. It's not very nice if they do get your side. You do get four smoke grenades, but um, you can set up keyboard binds to scout. I don't really recommend scouting, though, because you don't tend to get a lot of um, points doing that. The AMX-13 requires a careful driver. What I mean by that is, um, the engine isn't the most powerful, and it's quite a chunky light tank. So you're going to want to try and get into a flank position where you can sit and just watch the enemies roll on by, and you can put an APCBC in the side. The F6F is really recommended for close air support. It's not the best in the fighter role, however, so do bear that in mind. However, two 1,000 pound bombs are guaranteed to get you a kill. Six rockets might kill a light vehicle or even a tank from above. You'll just have to experiment. As for the CCKW, sit your spawn and just open fire on aircraft. Obviously, don't open fire as soon as you see the aircraft because you won't hit it. 
you're wasting your time and they know you're there. Alternatively, you can try what I do in this thing and try to use it as a tank buster. With 71mm pen, you can kill most tanks at 3.0, except for KV-1s, they are your biggest threat. But otherwise, this little truck is actually pretty fun to drive. So now we're going to move on to Italy. My recommended BR for Italy is 1.3. And well, I'm just going to switch over to this and you can see the true BRs. We we'll start out with one of the reserve tanks, the M1340 Series 3. Perfectly solid tank, good armour, okay mobility, decent gun, it gets the job done. Nothing really to say about this. AB41, no armour, great mobility, and has a pretty dang decent gun with HVAP. AS42, again, no armour, but you get an AA turret, you get 10 degrees of gun depression, and you get HVAP. <laughs> That's all I really need to say. CR42 Falco will be your air support for fighter and for your general purpose air support the BA65 is a perfectly good aircraft. Recommended tactics obviously M1340 you're going to want to try and take it slow with that thing. AB41 you're going to want to try and flank. AS42 when it's stuck you're going to want to use it as a spag. Once you get HVAP, however, go go balls in, because honestly, it can kill everything at its BR, except for a B1. CR-42 is not the best plane anymore. It's it's certainly a good aircraft. I, can, I can't knock it for that. But it won't be able to beat the Russian biplanes. It will give the British biplanes a run for their money, and it will not beat the Japanese biplanes. Um, you can kill some tanks from above with the 50 cals, however, I'd, I recommend saving your ammo. And with the BA-65, your engine is very vulnerable to fires, so do not go heads up with an SPAA. You will die, and they will not, unless you are shooting a milk truck or something. Um, my recommended bomb load is mixed, really. If I know I'm in an up tier, I generally take the two 100s. However, if I'm in a down, well, if I'm a 1.0 to 1.7, I take the 450s. Both of these bombs are perfectly capable of killing their targets. Okay, now we're moving on to Japan. Now, this one was quite easy. Japanese 3.3. We're starting out with the Chinu here. Obviously, this thing got a bit of a buff um, from when it first came out. I did like the Chinu, still do. But obviously, now that I have the Chinu too, this thing isn't really being brought out again. Then you have the Japanese Chavi, or as I call it, the Japfi. You then have the solo key, because low key, I had to make a Marvel reference at some point. The KI-61 Otsu will be your fighter support, but it can also serve as a pretty dang decent ground pounder. Now for your main attack aircraft, I was con a bit conflicted here. But I decided the KI-49 Donryu would be a better choice. The reason for this is because um, the Japanese aircraft tend to not really carry heavy bombs. The Kai 61s are a fair exception, but I thought, well, the A6 Imperial carries two 60 kilogram bombs and they require precision. The D4Y3s have a slight, shall we say, um, problem with their bomb bays, so um, they'd essentially use a mechanism to release the bomb so it doesn't hit the propeller. You can also use the um, Kai 49 2 Donryu, that carries the same payload but has German machine guns for defense instead of Japanese machine guns. I personally prefer this one, but for the sake of the video I'm just going to put this one here. You can basically use either one, it's your personal preference. Now into Britain. Britain was actually quite easy as well. Um, Britain 2.3. You only get two tanks in this lineup because I thought, in fact that's got the wrong armament on it, I've just realised. Um, you're going to want to start out with the Crusader Mark II. Very decent tank, not much armour, because obviously it's a cruiser tank, it's not meant to have armour. But um, this little guy is fast, it gets into position nicely, the two pounder gun, which I still need to work on. Um, and yeah, it's a jack of all trades master of really none. It can't really take a hit, but it can dish out a good hit. And with five crew members, this thing's actually pretty decent. And you get smoke grenades of 26, so again, pretty dang useful. Forgot to say tactics for um, Japan. Chinu, you're going to want to try and snipe with. Chaffee, you're going to want to try and explore flanks with. Soki, mainly is an SPAA. It's not very good. Ki-61, you're going to want to rush in, drop your bombs, kill a tank, and then go to fire duty. Because the Ki-61 can take on most threats. 
Kai 49, Carpet Bomber Cat Point, and just run. Because this thing's not very good anymore in terms of defending itself. It used to be godlike. But they've nerfed the 20 mil, they've nerfed the damage model of bombers with these cannon buffs and all that. But um, anyway, back to Britain. Obviously, you have the Valentine Mark 1. A perfectly solid tank with solid armor, a decent gun. You'll be okay in most aspects. The only issue about 2.3 Britain is you will get up to to fight Panzer 4 F2s. That is literally the only problem. Um, your SBA support would be one of my favorites, the T17E2 Armored Car, also known as Staghound. Um, this little guy is very handy. I do like this little car. Um, you do have a pretty long reload rate on the 50 cals, but it's fast, it's maneuverable, it gets into position nicely, and you can rake targets for the 50 cals. Now, for fight, well, for air support, I've actually suggested two planes. And once again, I, it tells you how long I've not prepared for this. Well, I, I'd recently used the Hurricane 2B as a fighter, so that's why I took the rockets off. The 2B can carry six rockets. Very, very good rockets. You get 12 machine guns as well of 7.7 .7 caliber. This thing will rake up aircraft. It will destroy tanks with these RP3s. If you hit a tank with an RP3, it is dead. No questions asked. Then I suggested the Hurricane Mark IV, and the reason for this is it's slightly more armoured. You do lose a bit of speed, for the most part. Obviously, it doesn't show on a stat card, but the Hurricane Mark IV is actually slower. But you do get two extra rockets. Recommended tactics, Crusader, obviously, it's a light tank. It's not really meant to take hits. Snipe with it, long range for the two-pounder. Valentine, you can angle your armour pretty nicely and take some hits. T-17, made is an SPAA, really. That's my recommendation. The Hurricanes are good fighters, and our Hurricane Mark IV can lay waste to ground forces. You do have two machine guns, though, so you can fight back against aircraft. However, I don't recommend it. Now on to Russia, and I'm just going to take a brief drinks break as I catch my breath. That's better. Um, Russia, I've recommended 3.7. So obviously, the infamous troll tastic tank, the T-34-1942, perfectly solid choice, it's got a decent gun, decent mobility, decent armour, decent turret traverse, decent reload, it's got everything going for it. Perfectly well-rounded tank, decent armour in most places, it'll get the job done. KV-1, now this tank does struggle a bit in up tiers because of its poor gun performance. But otherwise, you've got a pretty tough tank, especially if you angle your armor like this. It is a very tough beast to kill. That is for definite. Your SPAA support will be the S or ZIS-12 94KM. However, if you do not like the fact that it's completely open, there is the option of the BTR-152, which is rank 2, not rank 3. Um, where are you? Here we are. Um, this thing comes with twin 14.5mm machine guns, it has a bit of armour, it's going to save it from rifle caliber fire, but 50 cal fire, it's just going to go right through the armour. But if you prefer your armoured SBA, well slightly armoured SBAs, this thing's your choice. If you don't want to use like, armoured SBAs and you'd rather have speed and mobility, the ZIS-12 is going to be a better bet. Now for air support, I've chosen two planes obviously, um, the PE-2-1. It doesn't really matter which Pesca model you use, however, I recommend this one because of the lower BR. Um, you get two forward-facing machine guns, which are 7.62 caliber. Don't expect much out of them. Your rear turrets are 7.62 caliber. Again, don't expect much out of them. But once you get this thing spaded, you have two massive 500 kilogram bombs. You don't even have to land a bomb in the same postcode as a tank to kill it. That's why I like it. The Ak 9B is a perfectly solid choice as well. It it comes up as 9B, and I bet people are thinking, where are the actual bombs in this thing? What are actually carried here? They are very hard to drop sometimes, which is why I recommend dropping two bombs on the target, not one. Um, basically treat it like if you had underwing bombs. Drop two at the same time, you, you've got a higher chance of killing a target. Um, obviously the bomb bay is stored vertical, so you've got to take into account that, but otherwise it's just a yak fighter, so it'll do very well in the air support role. Tactics, obviously T-34, you're going to want to be on the front lines at all times. Taking hits, obviously don't drive out in front of German guns, they will shred you. 
But um, you're going to want to try and explore flanks or explore flanks using the T-34's mobility and just see from there. The KB-1 is really a heavy tank designed to do a heavy tank job. It can take hits from most German guns, obviously not all German guns. Some German guns will go right for it, some Italian guns will go right for it. So the KV-1 isn't as invincible as it used to be anymore, so just take that into account. Your SPAA, again, use it as an SPAA, or do what I did once in the ZIS-12 and use it as a tank buster where I killed a dicker max, which was quite funny. The PE-2, get in, drop your bombs and get out. The Yak-9B, drop your bombs and become a fire. That's my recommended tactics. And now we're on to Germany, we're nearing the end. Um, obviously, I have a lot more crew slots here, so feel free to take out vehicles as you see fit. But I've recommended 1.3 for Germany. Now, those of you who are OGs to the channel may remember the old clubbers. Um, the thing is with um, Chad Billingham, he doesn't really want vehicles that are premium, so I've had to accommodate for this. But then I thought, that's quite easy. So we start out with a king of seal clubbing, the Panzer IV C. Obviously your side armor is terrible, but your front armor can take 50 cows. The gun's decent, that's all you really need, and the mobility is pretty dang good. Nothing really to say here, it's a fantastic tank. The Panzer II F, now I recommended the F because it has slightly higher turret traverse, it's a bit faster uh, getting to speed because it's a bit lighter. But otherwise it's just a Panzer II. You don't really want to take hits in this thing, but if you could dish out hits with HVAP, it's going to have a bad time. Um, next tank, I was actually quite questionable about putting in. This is the Czech tank, the Panzer 35 or 38T A. Now, I personally don't recommend this tank, but I put it in the lineup purely for a backup. You don't have to use this thing, but I don't, I don't see why we shouldn't leave it out as like a backup vehicle. Obviously, this tank is actually a Skoda, so well, to be honest, in the testing, it actually had better emissions than the Volkswagen, so it's doing better already. So. And yes, that is a Volkswagen joke. Um, <laughs> I had to make at least one, people, come on. Um, personally, I don't recommend using this tank unless you need a backup vehicle. Otherwise, put the Doe 17 Z7 here. Or alternatively, even the Flag Panzer. The Flag Panzer is a perfectly good AA vehicle. Obviously, no armor, because it, it doesn't need armor. It's an SPAA. But... Um, a 20mm flat cannon which can shred basically anything. The Gepard can do the same at 2.0. Air support wise, you're going to have the HS-123, which is one of my favourite SPA, well, air support planes. 450kg bombs and a 250, it will kill basically anything. The Do 17 can carry 10 of those 50kg bombs or a single 250. If you're going to go carpet bombing, the 1050s are going to be your best bet, but if you need to nuke something, the 250 is your best bet. Obviously, if I was to fully recommend this lineup, obviously this is my non-premium lineup. Take out the Panzer 38, put the Doe here, and then put the 123 in as normal and to keep the Flak Panzer. This is a pretty solid lineup. You will win most games with it because German teams tend to be reasonably reliable at lower BRs. So you'll just have to see. And now finally we're on to the US. Now I was actually struggling which BR to put this at. I was going to put it at 5.0 and put the Jumbo here, but I thought, well, I don't know where Chad is in terms of the trees and all that. So I thought 2.0 would probably be your best bet. With the M3A1 Stuart being a perfectly solid choice, obviously good armor for a light tank, decent gun for a light tank, great mobility for a light tank, and I really rate three seconds on my crew with 10 degrees of gun depression, it's going to get a job done. Simple fact, it will get the job done. N22 Locus, obviously, um, I forgot to go over recommended tactics, but um, Panzer 4C, use it on the front lines. Panzer 2F, same with that. Um, Flak Panzer, SPA primarily when it's stock. Once you get spaded, use it as a tank destroyer and a SPAA. HS-123, use it as a die bomber. And a Doe 17, do the same. You can use the 123 as a fighter, though. And anyway, before I continue from, or before I did that, um, we need to carry on. Um, 
M22 Locust, small, fast, it, it has a good gun. Use this thing primarily as a flank exploiter. This thing used to be rank 2, but obviously now it's rank 1. But, um, so yeah, if you need a nice little light tank that's faster than a Stuart, you've got your tank. SBA support comes in the form of the M13 MGMC. Pretty solid choice, 250 caliber machine guns, it gets the job done. Air support, I recommend the SB2U3 with 450 calibers. Obviously, I don't recommend 1,000 pounder personally. You can use it, but I prefer the 2250s and the 500, because then you get two bomb drops. But for your fighter support, the P36C would be a solid choice. Obviously, recommended tactics. M3 M1, you're going to want to try and exploit flanks and get to a nice sniping position. Um, pretty solid tank, really. Um, gets the job done. Could take a hit if it needs to from some guns at its BR. And it gets the job done with that 37, that's for certain. Locust, however, you're going to want to be a bit more careful. Because obviously, this thing's smaller, it's a lot more vulnerable. And you're going to want to use the mobility of this little guy. And try to get to a good position quick and use that 37. However, just avoid getting shot because this thing cannot take a hit. So you've got three crew, and if you get hit to the turret, chances are you're already dead. M13, primarily as an SPAA. The 50 cals are effective at 1.3, but not so much in a 3.0 game as a full up tier. SB2 3. Dive bomber, and if you really want to go balls deep, use it as a fighter afterwards, like what I would do. P36C, use the 30 cals to mark tanks, use the 50 cal against planes. Maybe even some light targets. So I hope that helps anyone out who's looking for potential lineups for some vehicles and all that. Obviously you're going to change to your own personal taste or whatever you have unlocked. But... um. After years of experience, I think these are some of the better lineups. Obviously, you may have your own opinions about this, but that's perfectly acceptable. I'm always happy to hear people's opinions. But overall, across the six or well, the seven nations, I should say, I think I've gone with some pretty solid choices. Anyway, I will leave you all to obviously discuss. I hope you enjoyed this one, Chad. Um, I hope this helps you, mate. Um, Obviously, I'm not the world's best player, but I can still give decent advice. And these are my f seven recommended lineups that I made up last night. Um, fair enough, I was half asleep when I was thinking these lineups, but I thought these were the better options. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's unique video on um, lineup recommendations for silver lining grinding. And, well, if you want to see more videos like this, do let me know. I'm more than happy to do them. To like give recommendations for my personal experience and all that. Anyway, catch you all on the next one.